Hey everybody, in this video we are talking about production costs, specifically average variable costs and marginal costs and how those relate to supply. This is under the heading of cost of production and cost of production is kind of like the beginning chapters in when you are beginning to study theory of the firm. So I'm just trying to contextualize this. So what you are doing probably in your classes when you get to cost of production and studying these curves that I'm about to talk about is you're studying theory of the firm, how a firm makes decisions. Now, a firm weighs benefits versus costs like we all do when we make decisions and so we need to understand their different costs that's what you're doing at the beginning is you're focused on their different costs later on you'll get into the benefit side but to get into the benefit side deeply you need to understand that firms operate in different market structures that's coming later on again right now we're focused on the different costs that are out there again in this video we're focused on average variable costs marginal costs and how those two cost curves relate to supply Here's our graph. I want you to notice that it's dollars per unit on the vertical axis. That's a generic kind of like unit of measurement way of labeling the vertical axis because we are measuring so many things vertically. We're led, we are going to measure price vertically eventually. That will come later on. We start talking about the supply curve. But at first, we're just going to be measuring average variable cost and marginal cost vertically. Okay, so it's so important that students understand that we use the vertical axis to measure so many things, not just price okay so let's go ahead and get to it the first curve we're going to draw is our average variable cost curve because we've got some preceding videos to this that kind of have gotten you to understand that curve and it looks of course something like this okay now what you see is this kind of decreasing average variable cost and then increasing average variable cost. Remember, when we think about firms in the short run, uh, they have these different types of marginal returns. At first, they get increasing marginal returns. Guys, that's as they add additional variable in inputs to a set of fixed inputs. At first, they're getting increasing returns in output. Their output is continues to go up, or the additional output they get from an additional variable input is increasing. That's that increasing marginal returns. And then eventually, they get constant marginal marginal returns, and then they get diminishing or decreasing marginal returns, okay? So it's not perfectly related to a variable, an average curve this way, but in general, the reason we're going down for a while is we're getting those increasing marginal returns and then those decreasing marginal returns. Now, let's add in the marginal cost curve, okay? If my average is going down, all right, my marginal cost must be below it, okay? Besides the first unit, at the very first unit, the marginal and the average are the same thing. But I'm gonna just kind of begin this marginal curve and then I'm gonna stop right there, okay? Now, a little bit, maybe a little bit more exaggerate, exaggerated than I wanted it to be. Let me take one more shot. It'll look a lot the same way. I just didn't love that one. Eh, I think it's a little bit better. It might look the same to you. So one thing I want you to notice right here is marginal cost is going down and it's also going up, okay? What's important for you to take note of is that average variable cost is going down as long as MC is below, right? If that marginal cost, if that cost of that additional unit is below the average, it's pulling the average down, just like your grades, right? If your next grade was below your average, it would pull your average down. So it doesn't matter that we're both going down and up. What matters, what we want to take note of is that if ABC is going down, marginal cost must be below it. Some of the time it's going down, some of the time it's going up. Now, if the average is going up, the marginal cost has to be above it, right? If your average, if you're, if you're thinking about a course and your average in that course starts going up, it must be because your marginal grade, that, that next grade was higher than your average. That's what's pulling it up. And what you get from that is that MC curve is gonna intersect the ABC curve at its minimum, okay? Not sure I'm gonna do a perfect job of hitting the minimum, all right? Let's pretend that right there is the minimum. I think I got pretty close. Okay, now that's a really important point, okay? This dot right there, because what that dot is, is the beginning of the supply curve, okay? So generally what we say here at Econ Busters is the supply curve is the marginal cost curve, or the marginal cost curve is the supply curve. And that is true, but when you get to a single firm, it's a little bit more nuanced than that. The supply curve is the portion of the marginal cost curve that lies above the ABC curve. Let me say that again, it's a mouthful, and we're gonna talk about it here in just a second. The supply curve for a firm is the portion of the marginal cost curve that lies above the ABC curve. Why is that? Because if the price is below ABC, the firm is gonna shut down and not produce anything. Let, let me kind of go even bigger picture. 
what is a supply curve, okay? Let me go ahead and label where it's at. This is gonna be the supply curve. What is a supply curve? Well, a supply curve tells us how much we're gonna produce at every price point. Let me say that again. It tells us the quantity we're gonna supply at every single price point, okay? Well, if my prices are below ABC, we're not gonna produce at all. So this curve, that part of the curve doesn't tell us anything about supply. If you didn't follow that, trust me, you're gonna get it in just a second. But I think before I do anything, I'm gonna bring in a price point, okay? So we're gonna put a price right here, kind of a low price to kind of make this point right there. That should work decently, all right? I'm gonna dash that line because it's not a function. When I just want to mark, um, price or quantity, I use a dash line. I use solid lines for all my, our functions that are out there, right? Okay, so at this price, would the firm supply anything? And the answer is no. And why is that, okay? Well, let's just say that we've got this price right here, and I, I'm gonna ignore that dot. It'd be the same. Everything about the same would work also for this dot. I'm gonna focus on this dot right there, all right? So at that price, is this the quantity that we would supply? Would we supply that quantity right there? All right, so I wanna mark that quantity. And the answer is no, we would not supply that quantity, okay? So again, if, you, if you're missing the point, I'm trying to say the portion of the MC that is below ABC is not the supply curve. Meaning if the price is below that minimum ABC, we're gonna shut down and I'm trying to prove that uh, why that is, okay? So if I take my P times my Q, we should know what that is. That's total revenue, right? So that box right there is my total revenue. Now, at this output level, AVC is above the price, all right? So at that Q, I can go right to our ABC curve. That's the dot on my ABC. I'm gonna bring it over this direction. There's ABC. Well, if I take my AVC times my Q, I get variable cost. So I've got a situation that my variable cost is greater than my total revenue. If that is the case, shut down. Because if you shut down, the only thing that you are going to incur is your fixed cost, right? If you shut down, you only incur fixed costs. Your variable costs go to zero, all right? So if we operate, well, this is how much we would produce, okay? Uh, or I should say, that's how much we produce. And if we operate, this would be our total revenue. Our variable cost is more. So now we're gonna have this additional cost. This is how much the variable cost is exceeding the total revenue. Add that on to the fixed cost and that would be your losses. No, 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 don't do that. Just shut down and so you only incur your fixed cost. Don't incur your fixed cost. Do not incur your fixed cost plus this additional amount by which the variable cost is exceeding your total revenue. That would not make sense. So, takeaway, all right? Later on, you're gonna hear here at Econ Busters, let's talk about the big five curves. There's the big three, marginal cost, MR and D. You don't really, uh, we haven't really got there yet. You will eventually. MR and MC tell you the output, D tells you the price. Then we're gonna bring in an ATC curve, average total cost curve. You need that for profit and loss. And then there is the AVC curve, okay? The AVC curve is the fifth curve. You only need that fifth curve if you're making losses. So I know that was a lot because we haven't really got there yet but again there's MR there's MC and there's demand MR and MC give you output demand once you know the output demands the key to finding price ATC is the key to profit and loss and if you're making losses now you need to go look at that AVC to figure out if you're going to operate if that price is above ABC, you're gonna operate. Even if you're making losses, you're gonna operate in the short run. But if that price is below ABC, you shut it down. This portion of the supply, uh, sorry, of the marginal cost curve is not the supply curve. This portion of the marginal cost curve is not the supply curve. The supply curve is only the portion of the MC that lies above ABC. Any price, any price point, below any of these different prices and guess what we're shutting down hope that makes sense to you we'll see you in the next video